Now, we are working on getting the oil cooler mocked up. So, that's kind of roughly where I'm thinking it's gonna sit. It kind of tucks in nicely underneath the S&B. Basically, I have that just kind of held in place right now of where I'm thinking it's gonna sit. So, I kind of cut that mount for the oil cooler out on the plasma table. Um, so, kind of got the oil cooler where I want it. Now, I am working on installing the oil cooler, you know, basically like adapter plate from ZRP, which is this guy, without the hose, the hose is mine. Um, so we're gonna get this installed, this guy installed in place of the oil cooler, which is like the stock one, which is right there. And then after that, we will install the oil cooler thermostat. Um, and then once we have all three of these things mocked up and installed, then we can figure out where all of our lines are gonna go so I can get fittings ordered. So in order to install an oil cooler, you need to take off that outside plastic plate, right, that covers up all those hoses, just two Torx bits. And then you need to take off the inside cover plate, which just has two bolts. There are uh, two 10 mil bolts. One is right there, and then the other one is like down a little bit lower, just right through there. So you have to cut all the zip ties off of there and stuff like that, um, and then you can get to it. So I did drain the coolant. Um, I just have you know some of these Harbor Freight hose clamp pliers. So and I just marked which hose went to which port. Um, I did take a picture beforehand, but I would rather be idiot proof. So, so you know, clamp both hoses off, popped them off, drained the coolant into the bucket. So now what we can do is we can take this guy off. Um, looks like just a pair or a pair uh, four eight millimeter bolts one at each corner and then this bad boy should come right off so um, definitely gonna need a quarter drive to be able to install them because using this 3 8 drive it definitely puts it at a little bit of an angle all right so now should be able to get our bucket a little closer just in case but should be able to pop this thing off there we go so this stock oil cooler as they call it um, basically it cools the you know cools the oil using the radiator which is less than ideal because, well, we already have cooling issues. So we need to take as much strain off of the radiator as possible. So that's what hopefully this new cooler setup will solve all of our issues. If Because uh, we are not going to be doing a rear mount radiator. I got the oil cooler block off plate, the ZRP plate back on there. Um, torqued down these four bolts here at the corner. They're eight millimeter. Um, torqued those down to, what did it say? It said 7.4 foot pounds, which basically comes out to like 85 inch pounds, right? It comes out to, you know, it's a little bit more than that, but I went to 85 inch pounds. First I hit them all at 80, and then I went back and then I did 85 inch pounds. Um, and I'm not gonna lie to you, that felt like, like a lot. Like I was super nervous about them stripping out. Um, after that, got all of our hoses and stuff like that put back on here. Um, I still need to do the zip ties and stuff like that. Um, I didn't really think that this was that important to show just cause it's a, a lot of just monkeying around trying to just get everything to fit nicely in there. Um, so now what we're doing is we got a bunch of Dash 8 AN line and we've got a bunch of um, Fergola AN fittings. So we got the AN lines all made up and stuff. Um, apparently I can't read and I ordered a bunch. All right, I know you guys are new here. I've been here a while, so I'll fill you in. This whole not being able to read thing, you're gonna find out that's a fairly common occurrence. I, he may look intelligent, but looks can be deceiving. So, yeah, yeah, bear with us.
Best of luck. To dash six a n hose ends. I also wrote a bunch of dash eights, and apparently even a dash ten. So yeah, apparently I can't read. So we got some hose ends on, and then we're missing some others. You know, like you could see. One of them right there we don't have, right? Then that long hose that will cut eventually. That doesn't have an end on it, right? So they all have one end on them, and then one end is not. So we have this uh, DEI heat shielding that I put over this line right here because as you can see down in there, right? You can see where the line runs right down in there. By that exhaust it's pretty close I mean I can fit two and a half fingers in there two and a half three fingers in between so definitely a little close for comfort there so that's why we threw that uh, DEI heat shielding on there um, that stuff is absolutely phenomenal stuff it works incredibly well so that's for the what that is for the line coming out of the engine this other line right here that goes down that snakes right down through there um, that is for the line going into the engine and as you can see i also put heat shielding on that not so much for heat on that one though that's more so for um, rubbing and chafing so one thing we're gonna have to do for that one is we're gonna have to secure this hose we're gonna have to secure it in a way that it will you know not rub or chafe on anything in there so we'll have to make some kind of a bracket or standoff that will come off of here you know to help hold this line in place then we got our uh, oil cooler thermostat in here um, you don't want to run you know uh, just an oil cooler without a thermostat because it can get too cold actually it sounds kind of weird but it can so this is a 205 degree thermostat so it'll start to open at 190 and it'll be full open at 205 so mounted that up there I need to have one more 90 and stuff to go in, you know, right over here. So then come up here to the top, right? Got to cut a nice hole here in the bed. Um, and as you can see, also, I had to drill these two holes right here so I could, you know, get to the fasteners that hold that, um, hold the thermostat on. So these two lines right here, one of them, again, these are way too long, I know, but it's better to. You know, you can always cut more hose off. You can't really add it back on. So this one will go right here. And then this one will kind of follow it. It'll go like this. And then it comes up. And then there'll be a 90 degree hose end that will connect up top. On this top one up here, in between the 90 degree hose end and the cooler, we're actually going to put a gauge port on there. Um, that's the one that apparently I ordered a dash 10 of when I should have ordered a dash 8. So, my bad. Um, because in that... Uh, gauge port we're gonna actually put a fan switch in there so the fan will come on at what is it the fan will come on at 200 degrees I think and so that's gonna be coming oh, that's gonna be coming out of the cooler so that'll be the hottest or sorry that'll be the coolest it'll be in the system and once the coolest part of the system is up to 200 degrees I'd like the fan to kick on to try to help you know really keep it cool also man I tell you what is it just me or is it like every five minute project turns into like two hours? Anyway, had to remake this upper bracket. Um, had to shorten it up a little bit, but I got the, you know, rubber mounts in there. Uh, basically, I just pulled the ones off the, you know, just um, what, off the cooling fan up there for the radiator. So I got the rubber mounts in and stuff. And I think this is gonna work pretty darn good for us okay it's a new day got the 24 hours of Lama playing and we have the oil cooler if you look closely it's actually bolted in and we're actually welding it in finally um, I basically I had to remake this little bracket a third time each time it you know got progressively shorter and stuff um, finally like how this is so the stock can-am rubber mounts um, that I stole from the radiator that was definitely probably one of the more expensive ways I could have done it but 
I really like them stuff they work really good holds it on there well but it still does have flex and movement which is good so also finally broke down maybe this would be a better background maybe to see finally broke down and TIG welded so I you know this would have taken 15 minutes to weld with the MIG welder but I've wanted to learn how to TIG weld and I said that this project, I was gonna learn some new things on it. So finally, you know, I bit the bullet and I did it. All right, particle separator welded in. So it's definitely kind of a pain in the butt to do, but got it all welded in and stuff, made sure it was, because the car is not perfectly level right now passenger side's a fuzz high so put the level on that bar and then put the level on the top and made sure that you know it matched how far off from level it was um, so now get to uh, you know clean up around the welds and stuff like that and I can paint the particle separator brackets and I can paint the um, oil cooler front bracket and I get to paint the um, spare tire carrier so some good progress. Oh, and I can finally paint the upper shock mounts too, which will be awesome because uh, I've definitely had it on my list to finish painting the chassis and I have not been able to finish it yet. So, so I'm gonna... you know how I've been like overthinking just about every aspect of this entire project I can? Well, I'm an idiot. Let's check this out. So you know how I just made those super cool brackets that I was really proud of and all that? right these brackets you know that were nice and rigid well because this web right here comes over the particle separator bracket can't get the goddamn thing out now <laughs> what an idiot so now I get to uh, modify my brackets I think I'll probably just like cut the top like this top rib out, you know just like this entire like top section of it so that way this can come out but yeah so here you go make sure it works what a bonehead oh boy well we'll keep on it okay so I got our fittings on here so this bottom one is just gonna be a straight so you go into the cooler on the bottom you're right, circulate, circulates, pushes up. It can push any air out and it comes out the top, right? You don't want to run it the other way because you could potentially end up with an air bubble trapped in there. You always want to make sure that your air bubble will be pushed up and out. So I think we're going to use a straight one down here and I have a feeling up here will be like a 90 or a 45. But this is actually our thermal switch for when the fan will turn on. This is a 200 degree switch so I have it on the outlet because once the what this would be like the coolest part of the whole system right what comes out of the cooler so when the coolest part of the system is at 200 degrees I want the fan to kick on then right just because I don't want the fan to kick on too soon all right fresh hose made and that is gonna work out really well Just like that. So I think actually though, I'm gonna have this little guy, I think I'm gonna have it facing that way, just cause that way it can just shoot straight down for the wiring, secure it better. Alrighty, the uh, upper part of the oil cooler is done, mounted. So now I can actually take this off and service the belt filter and stuff without having to remove the particle separator. You know, um, I can get the intercooler cover off without having to remove the oil cooler um, which is awesome so heck yeah now to do the underside so continuing on here underneath I got the upper ends of the um, and lines done I took off that side cover plate got the um, you know connections all torqued down and stuff like that this bottom one snakes through there it is so stinking close but it works so one thing 
the exhaust would like came down like right here right through here is where the fuel line ran and it goes up here to the fuel rail so what I did, because I didn't want that fuel line to get super hot, is I rerouted the fuel line so that instead of coming up right back here, it stayed low, comes over here, you know, and comes up through there. Also used a P-clamp to secure this line out of the way. That way it can't rub on anything, can't chafe on anything. It's, you know, I admit my paranoia got to me. So for this exhaust, I was really concerned with uh, the oil cooler line right there and how close it is to, you know, the exhaust muffler. Realistically, it probably would have been fine. That's why I put that DEI uh, heat shielding over it and stuff, but just made a shroud. Uh, what was it? It was like some 18 or some 22 gauge, just sheet metal. Mainly this was just kind of like a test. I just want to make sure that it works. Then I'll make it out of some stainless, um, but fairly rigid. I just put like a, you know, a little bend here at the top just to give it rigidity. The bottom of it, you know, is curved with the muffler. And then uh, it's just held on, you know, with some, you know, hose clamps front and rear. So, like I said, it's not the, prettiest thing in the world right now but it's plenty rigid it's not gonna rattle give me some nice uh, you know protection there you know so overall I think dare I say once I paint that thing I'm gonna done